Uh, I am. I, I am going to cover it. I, um, if I don't end up covering it, not in this um, presentation, but I'll make sure I cover it, whether it's in some of the solutions or uh, I don't know, maybe spend 15, 20 minutes uh, later on talking about it. It's, it, it, it definitely give you enough to get started. So um, what we're going to be doing with this workshop is that we're going to um, build a, uh, it's a workshop where you're basically going to be able to build a tool to allow you to select things in the DOM. Um, it, it's kind of interesting because I think it'll give you a better understanding of what the DOM is. And there are, there's code out there that allows you to do this stuff already, um, but I think it's, um, it's still very important to sort of realize that these tools that are out there are not magic bullets, but they're basically just sitting on top of the JavaScript APIs. In the end, that's the only thing that the browser has to, to work with. That's all that these libraries are. So when we talk about the DOM, what is the DOM? Uh, that's not what the DOM is, right? The DOM is the document object model. And the question is, you know, how does this, what is the document object model? How does it end up getting created? Well, you know, when we end up using a web browser, right, a web browser is taking a, an HTML page uh, and it's displaying that HTML page. And you can sort of think, you know, I think initially, um, it's actually the case. I mean, initially, that's all it would end up doing. It would end up basically taking this um, this standard markup and turn it into something that you could look at, right? And take this text and turn it into something that you could you could take a look at. And it really was pretty flat. It wasn't all that much that you could end up doing with it. But one of the uh, things that that changed pretty early on was the idea that uh, you had access to this, uh, what was in the browser. You had access, and you had access through this document object model. So you had the ability, when a web page ends up loading HTML, you have the ability to manipulate what you're looking at through this document object model. So there's a couple of little analogies we could end up using here. The idea that the HTML, HTML itself is sort of a blueprint of for a house, right? It's sort of this flat thing that you're looking at, this file, okay? But the house itself is something you can end up interacting with when it ends up getting built. So if you think about our HTML page, we can think about it as a blueprint, right? And the house is going to be your document object model. So, you know, why does it end up uh, becoming, uh, you know, so important. How does this end up working out? So we have our HTML, right? The, uh, we end up, you know, ac uh, uh, accessing this HTML through a browser. And, you know, what ends up uh, coming back here? Well, I mean, th the, the thing that's actually happening here is that you could start to access various elements in the DOM. And you can end up doing it through JavaScript. So it's kind of an important thing to, to sort of think about. And, and this will come up uh, more when we, sort of, when we look at how JavaScript, and we'll do this lecture in, in tomorrow, actually, how JavaScript is used differently in the browser and on the server. So one of the things that, um, that ends up happening here is that through JavaScript, you have access through the DOM. There's nothing, if you looked at the specifications for JavaScript, so JavaScript is this uh, uh, set of specifications and browsers end up implementing this set of specifications. There's nothing in that set, set of specifications that deals with the DOM at all. But the DOM's actually another set of specifications and through JavaScript, you have access to the DOM. So you could sort of think that in terms of, you know, how the browser ends up using it. The browser has this 
uh, document object model that ends up getting loaded, and you have access through to that document object model through your code, right? You have an entree into it. So in terms of you know, how this ends up getting done, what you really have is you have this runtime that has the document object model, and you're going to have the ability to manipulate this document object model. The other thing that's, that's uh, uh, kind of interesting is that this document object model takes the form of a tree. Right, so, and again, it's these whole oh, idea, the same way that we sort of think about our binary tree, right, where it's kind of upside down. We're starting off with our HTML, and uh, true, this is, this part up here with the head and body is binary because there's only two nodes underneath it. The sort of binary part of that really ends because basically you have this parent trial relationship. So we've worked with trees before, our binary search tree was something that you would basically go from the top and move downward. If you couldn't go, there was no way to go in the other direction. Okay? With the document object model, which is also a tree, we have the ability to move up and down and move over and that sort of thing. And again, we have uh, access to it because we have these objects that are loaded and we can end up accessing them through JavaScript. So, Let's actually take a look. Let's pop up. Let me get out of this for a second. Let's pop up JS Bin and look at it. So let's do like our the most simplistic uh, example that we could sort of think about. Um, and. So let's do our console. Let's run this. Okay. So if we were to go over here, and I'm going to put in h1 tag hello. All right. So in terms of our document object model, one of the things that we have the ability to do is access these elements on the page through JavaScript. And there's a fairly limited number of methods that we could end up using to do this. So let's say um, I'm going to actually put an ID here, and I'm going to call this title. I'll go over here, and I'll say title equals document get element by ID, and I'll go over here, and I'm going to put in title, and let's actually see if I could see this title. Let's say I'm going to say title inner HTML, all right? So one of the methods that you could end up using, let me clear this out so we don't see all this stuff here. Okay. So one of the things that uh, you can see is that the, uh, we have access to this document object. The document object has methods that allow us to interact with the DOM. And there's really just two methods that we could end up using to get things. One of them is get element by ID. I'll show you something kind of interesting here. We could go over here. And let's actually see a different way to access something. I'm going to put in here an unordered list. And let's get rid of this. One of the things we could also do here is that we also have the ability to manipulate this DOM by going over here and we can get properties and we can end up setting properties. So I could change this. Okay. 
Huh? So this HTML ends up loading, okay? This JavaScript ends up loading. There's something that's actually important here that JSBid is doing, which is pretty critical. And I'll give you another example where I'll actually open this up and set up a project, and maybe we can also take a five-minute look into, into Git as well. Um, but it's very important, and this is the way that JSBin works, is JSBin is loading this JavaScript after it ends up loading the HTML. All right? So this document object model can end up getting manipulated. Um, let's say I gave this a class. It'd be a little bit more confusing. I could give it a class of title. And I could say, if your title, your color is going to be pretty annoying, but you could end up doing that. So one other thing you could also do, there's all kinds of things that you could end up doing from this, um, when you end up having an element. Again, this is sort of a, a you have a reference, this element that's on this page. So, I mean, if I say console.log and I say title class names, class list, I think it is. Okay. So here, I've got my class list and I could see some values from that class list. So you could have multiple classes that are here. So let's say I had a class title and foo. I could see, if I look at that, I could see title and foo here. Class list is, again, one of those interesting, um, interesting things where it sort of feels like it's array-like, but it's not quite an array. If I end up looking at my class list from my title, I could do a length, and it'll give me a length of two. But if I was under the assumption that it was an array, I would find out how quickly it wasn't if I did something like that, and I would find out it was undefined, right? But we could always use our method to turn things that are sort of array-like into an array. So let's say that, let's say pick a kind of a silly example here. We said there's a couple of different ways to end up accessing uh, elements better in the DOM, I could do something else. So document get element by ID. Document get element by ID is kind of interesting um, in the sense that if it finds it by ID, it'll return that particular DOM element that you have the ability to manipulate. You could end up removing it, you could add things to it, you could set its properties. Um, if I was to go over here and let's say I screwed up and I did this get element by ID, I did it with a capital T, okay? Notice I get an error message here. And the reason why I get it, yawning already, we just started. I can't believe this. <laughs> so if I end up doing that here and I say console.log title, right, I'll find out that what's happening here is that I'm getting back no, because I didn't end up finding this. So document get element by ID gives you back one item, if, any, if anything, right, if it finds it. Now, there's another way that you can access things in the DOM, right? The DOM is really a visual representation of your markup. Your markup is made of tags, okay? So the other way to get things through the DOM, let's fix this. I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to say, let's clean this out here. And I'm gonna say um, ULs, unordered lists. Document, notice get elements, not get element, get elements by tag name. And I'm gonna put in a UL. I do console.log ULs, okay? 
I could see him getting something back here. I've got a length. I've got some other stuff that's here as well. And again, if I said ul's dot length, I could see it's got a length of one. But again, like a lot of collections that you'll end up dealing with in the DOM, it sort of feels like an array, but it's not quite an array. How come it's not an array? I don't know. It's just not. Um, but you have to be aware of that if you decide you're going to use some array methods on it. So if I was to do this, I would find out it was undefined. Now, what I might want to do here is I might want to, let's say I have this unordered list, where you, which you can't even see here, because in fact, there's nothing that's in that unordered list, so it's empty. Well, if I was to go over here, and what I can do is I'm going to create another variable, and this is going to be an unordered list. Now, again, it's not an array, but just like a lot of other things, it's something you could iterate over it. And if it's something that you could iterate over, you can actually access it with an index. Okay? So this is basically going to grab me this unordered list. And if I was to go over here and you know maybe do a console.log and say ul inner HTML, basically telling me I don't really have anything in there. But the same way that you can access something, I can create a list item. There's a create element. So the document has the ability to actually create an element. It's basically creating a tag. Okay? It's creating a tag. That tag is in memory. Okay? It's not going into my DOM yet. Okay? It's up to me to actually add it into my DOM. So what I can do is that I've got this list item. I could say, hey, look, I have an unordered list. Okay? And there's a number of different methods that you could end up using that the document object model gives you access to. Again, not JavaScript. Okay? It's not the JavaScript specification that does this. right? It's the document object model specification that says, hey, look, if you have these you know, elements in the DOM, one of the things you could do to it is to send the child to it. And I'm going to append my list item. Not a very exciting list item, but you can see that I get that dot to show up over there. Okay? If I wanted to have some text that was there, I could go up here. And I could, here's my list item. And I could say list item, inner HTML. And I could say list item. Okay. So again, the, the big sort of takeaway here is that you're going to have access to your DOM that ends up loading through this API. You're going to have different methods that you could use. This is actually one of those things where you know there's documentation. If you look under, I think, and I'll, and I'll, I'll slack these out to you as well, but. If we go back so if we take a look over here here's our Dom tree so there are move this over here so I can browse to it so there's documentation for the DOM. In other words, if you wanted to know what method you could end up using, here is the document object, right? And it basically is giving you access to the, the DOM. And these are all things that you could end up doing with the document object. So for instance, We could go over here. I'm just trying to see where the create child stuff is. 
So one of the things you could end up doing, like you could end up getting the children of a node, you could end up, you know, basically querying it, you could get the class names to it. Here. So in other words, one of the things that we were doing, and the, the thing that's kind of, uh, it's actually important here, is that uh, what we're sort of looking at here, when we end up getting an element by ID, or we end up grabbing the first element from document, get elements by tag name, what we're doing is basically getting a node. These are called nodes, and the, the nodes have the ability to um, do things like um, append child, or create elements. So, you know, as you, you might not have to dig too much into the, into the documentation here, but you're gonna basically be building a tool that's gonna allow you to go and uh, manipulate the DOM and find things in a little bit of a better way. Now, I, I have to tell you that uh, when I end up doing this, this is not something that is commonly going to be used. And, one of the reasons for that is that there are other libraries that actually sit on top of this and make this a lot easier to use. jQuery is the one that comes to mind. Um, although jQuery is sort of has fallen out of flavor a little bit because there's other JavaScript frameworks that are used a lot more and have a lot more um, that are a lot more robust, especially in terms of creating uh, single page applications. So. Um, you have the ability to have this DOM end up loading, and there's you know all kinds of things that you could do here. I'll just show you one other thing here that we could do. Uh, you also have the ability. So here's our list item that we're going to be adding to the DOM. We could even end up uh, doing something like uh, list item on click equals function. And I'm going to say console.log this. So not only am I adding something to the DOM, and this you'll be doing a lot more of when we end up getting to this, uh, to this game of life workshop, but you have the ability to go in here, and if I click on this, See what I'm missing here. Yeah, see, one of the things that ends up happening when you get so used to using frameworks to add your event handling, huh? Say it again. Mm, on click should work. Um, well, you know, I'll, I'll give another, I'll, I'll, I'll figure that out while you guys are working on the workshop. Well, you have the ability to basically add event handlers and that sort of thing uh, as well. So we're gonna, we'll end up getting into the workshop uh, uh, pretty quickly. And again, our, the, the whole thing with the workshop, and it's done in the context of uh, some test-driven development, where what you're gonna basically be doing is building a selector function so you have the ability to uh, have a lot more control over what you want to select. Uh, in other words, what you're going to be able to do is to say, hey, look, I want to select uh, elements by uh, tag names and do something with them. I want to be able to select them by IDs and do something with them. I want to be able to select them by tags and IDs, or I want to be able to select them by tags and classes and and that sort of thing. So that's what the workshop is gonna uh, take you through. Again, part of it is getting an introduction to working uh, with the DOM. Uh, there's also some other stuff in there that'll build upon some of the stuff that we've already done in terms of functional programming and creating functions, helper functions, which are uh, you know, functions that end up returning other functions, uh, as well as um, some uh, recursion as well, which will uh, be kind of interesting. So um, I'm going to stop recording this. I, I will end up, I'll post these, uh, a PDF for this. So there's a section that I'm putting under our uh, repo with all our PDF files. I'll post this up. Um, I'm going to 
uh, separate you, got, you folks out into pairs, and uh, we're going to do this probably till I, th I think about one o'clock, and then we're going to go over the solution too. All right.